Imagine someone told you that roads could be built using old tires cheaper, stronger and more eco-friendly than traditional methods. Sounds absurd, right? But in the heart of West Africa, one man has turned that idea into a reality. In Burkina Faso, President Ibrahim has launched a revolutionary initiative that has caught the attention of the entire world. Here, discarded and unusable tires once destined for landfills or burned into toxic smoke are being used to build resilient roads. This isn't a pilot project or an experiment anymore. It's part of a growing national highway network. Why did choose such an unconventional path? Was it purely a cost-cutting measure? Or is there a deeper environmental vision behind it? These questions have sparked global curiosity and admiration. In today's video, we'll show you how this bold, game-changing project is transforming the destiny of Burkina Faso, and why engineers around the world are eager to learn from it. Burkina Faso has long struggled with crumbling infrastructure and heavy dependence on foreign loans. Its roads were often washed away during rainy seasons or cracked under the intense summer heat. Rural paths were muddy and dangerous, making it nearly impossible for ambulances, school buses, and fire trucks to reach remote areas. Faced with these challenges, President knew he had to find a solution that was affordable, long-lasting, and environmentally sustainable. The answer lay in a material the world had been treating as garbage, rubber tires. These tires, once a source of pollution, are now being repurposed. Workers lay them on the ground in neat rows, and cover them with a specially formulated cement mixture that bonds perfectly with rubber and withstands extreme temperatures. Experts say this method is not only sustainable, but also reduces construction costs by up to 40% compared to traditional roads. That's not all these rubber-based roads are more flexible, absorbing shocks from floods and even minor earthquakes. The rubber helps distribute pressure evenly, making the surface less likely to crack. Thanks to this innovation, Small villages are now connected to major cities. What used to be a five-hour journey is now just a one-hour drive. President didn't just build roads, he created opportunities. Thousands of young people have been employed to collect, clean, and process tires, as well as to participate in construction. Unemployment is falling. Pride in the nation is rising. Some local engineers have even proposed an upgrade filling the gaps inside the tires with sand or recycled plastics to increase road durability. These upgrades are now being tested in real time. But there's more. By using local discarded materials, Burkina Faso has significantly reduced its reliance on imported. Expensive construction resources like asphalt and bitumen, saving vital foreign exchange reserves. This smart move quietly loosened the grip of international financial control. Now leaders from countries like Mali, Niger, and Chad are visiting to study this innovative model. European environmental organizations have even dubbed it the Eco-Road Model. They believe this could be replicated in quieter city zones globally, dramatically reducing pollution. For Ibrahim, this isn't just a road-building project. It's a statement, a declaration that self-reliance is possible. It's that a poor nation can lead the world through innovation and integrity. And he's not stopping there. Another groundbreaking initiative is underway. The construction of artificial canals to support farmers. This isn't just about water, it's about hope. For decades, farmers have suffered from inconsistent rainfall. Seeds were sown, but crops never grew. Hunger became a way of life. When came to power, he brought with him not just political authority, but a deep understanding of the land and its people. He knew that without thriving farmers, there could be no thriving nation. So he launched a large-scale canal system that collects and stores rainwater, distributing it throughout the year to arid regions. Now, farmers don't have to rely on prayers or wait for clouds. Water will be in their hands. This project won't just boost agriculture. It will ensure food security, reduce imports, and generate exports. Wheat, rice, maize, vegetables, fruits all will be grown in Burkina Faso and perhaps, someday, shipped to the world. And then there is the most visionary project of all, the creation of a modern, solar-powered city in the heart of Burkina Faso. Once, this was a country where people lived in darkness, cooking on wood fires and studying under lantern light. Now, it is building a city that will run entirely on the power of the sun. No electric poles, no fossil fuels, no expensive electricity bills. Every rooftop will house solar panels, powering homes, schools, hospitals, and factories. 
understands that true progress ISNT about skyscrapers at S, about bringing real change to everyday lives, this solar city will also generate thousands of local jobs in manufacturing, installation, and maintenance of solar systems. It's not just a city, it's a blueprint for the nation. Modern schools will teach advanced technology. Solar-powered buses will reduce emissions. Free solar Wi-Fi zones will help young people connect to the world. A country once invisible on the world map is now leading the global conversation on environment, energy, and innovation. All of this because one leader chose action over aid, because Ibrahim believed in the power of people and in building with what the world throws away. If you believe this journey isn't just for Burkina Faso but for all of Africa, the entire Muslim world, and oppressed nations everywhere, then don't keep this story to yourself. Share it. Spread it. Let the world see that true revolution doesn't need a superpower. All it takes is one honest, visionary leader. Ah! Tell us in the comments which project inspired you the most. And if you'd like more such powerful stories that not only inform but touch the heart, then subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that every new spark of hope and courage reaches you first.